so this is the beam over here so this is a simply supported beam so one support is the hinge support and another support is the roller support okay to make it a bit tough we'll add another roller support over here right so in this span of the beam we'll apply a load of 10 kN at the center so let us take this span as 5 meters okay so this is 5 meters and this span over here is 4 meters so we'll apply the load at center and in this span we'll apply the load at 1 meter from this support that is this distance is 1 meter and this distance over here is 2.5 meters right so this is 10 kN and here we'll apply the load of 5 kN okay okay so let's do it so go to file and click on new model and over here click on use built-in settings with so uh, display units select metric SI uh, gives you the unit of length as meter and unit of force as kilonewton so a uh, US customary will give you the force in kilonewton and the length in feet and inches so we'll go with metric SI for now and still database we don't need right now but you can select any of these uh, these options over here so uh, I'll choose Indian here and still design code uh, this also we don't need but you can you know choose choose any of the code that is followed in your country so i'll choose is 800 2007 and concrete design code you can select any of the code that is followed in your country i'll select is 456 2000 that is indian standard code so i live in nepal and in nepal we follow indian standard codes okay so we just click on okay so after that we see this dialog box where we can edit the grids okay so here we are drawing this beam and uh, this point over here is our origin so let's change the color uh, let's do it the red and uh, and and we know that in this direction we got our y-axis and in this direction we got our x-axis and in the upward direction we got our g-axis right so what we now do is we define the first grid for uh, this joint so that is uh, a grid that lies uh, in this uh, in this direction and the next grid we'll have for this support that is the b grid and the next grid we'll have for this support that is for the c grid okay uh, alternatively you can also define the support for these loads as well in that case it will be b it will be c it will be d and it will be e all right so we don't need any grids any grids in the y and the g direction but we'll need a single grid line for y and g direction okay uh, so here we'll not be drawing uh, these two grids okay these two grids so we need a grid at five meter from the origin for this support and another grid should be at five plus four that is nine meter from the origin so we change our data accordingly all right so here it says uniform grid spacing so we are not doing the uniform grid spacing because our grid spacing varies that is why we'll go with the custom grid spacing so here we'll click on edit grid data and edit grid system data dialog box appears so you can change the name of this grid over here and another is a rectangular grid system so there are two options by which you can define the grids one is using the ordinates and another is using the spacing in this video we'll see this option and in the next video we'll see this option over here so x grid data that is the grid data in the x direction so they are numbered as a b c d and you can see this thing over here as well so x ordinate so we need a grid at zero that is at the origin for the hinge support another grid is at the five meters so we'll click on five and hit enter so you have to check the units over here all right and our next grid we need at 9 meter from the origin so next is 9 and hit enter so we don't need this grid so we'll just delete it okay all right so in the y grid we don't need any of these grids but we'll need a single grid line and we just click on after selecting these we just click on delete so bubble size you can change so size of these bubbles you can change if you want reference points and reference planes so these options we'll see when we model the real building so after that just click on ok so here it says story dimensions so that is these are the grids in the z direction 
So a uh, number of stories, you can change uh, these values for now or you can just keep them as they are because we are just drawing a simply supported beam and we don't need anything in the height in the stories. So a uh, number of stories to make it uh, simple, just click on one and after that, just click on OK. So now you can see over here, this is the XY plane and this over here is the 3D view. Okay. So if you see the beam, then you can see that uh, you can visualize the beam and the load in the XG plane, right? In this plane over here. So what we do, we just go to the XG view in this window and we'll keep the 3D view in this window. So uh, over here, there is an option to change the view. So here it says the plan or the elevation. So we are going to the elevation. So click on elevation over here and here uh, which view you want. So here you can see that uh, this grid system is numbered as one, two, three, and so on, right? And this is as A and B and C, right? So uh, uh, so the A option means, so if you click on A option and hit OK, so it will give you this elevation over here. And if you click on B and hit enter, it will give you this elevation over here. So what we want, we want this elevation over here. So for that, we have to click on one right so same thing we do click on one and click on okay now you can see you got the xg plane right so click on 3d window uh, just rotate this because it doesn't give a very good view so zoom out so for zooming out use the middle mouse button scroll down just like you do in the autocad if you're using after doing this we draw a simply supported beam all right, so for drawing anything, you have to first define the material, define the section, and after that only you can draw. So, but here we are just seeing how ETAB basically works, right? So we don't have to do these things in advance and we'll learn these things while we design or while we model our real building, okay? So we'll just draw a simply supported beam without considering its section and its material. So we go to draw and click, and over here, if you hover on draw beam column brace, another option appears so over here draw beam column brace you can click on this option so these icons over here you can see here as well so it means that you can either click here to activate that option or you can activate those options using these menus okay so uh, click on draw hover over here and click on draw beam column brace so here it says properties of the objects and 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 now you can see that if you click here then an option appears so this shows that you are drawing a beam so we got our hinge support at this point we got uh, we got a roller support at this point and we got roller support at this point so what we do we draw a beam from here to here so we click here so that is a five meters you can see the length and again after that we click on here that is of four meters Okay, so your click should be precise. Alternatively, what you can do is that you can define grid for your load and you can draw your beam from this point up to the load and again up to the support. Okay, so there are two methods. You can use any of those methods, right? After that, just click on this close option and hit escape to escape that command escape that command you can see that ETAPS has automatically assigned hinge supports to these joints so what we'll do we'll change these supports okay so click here and click here and after that go to assign so in ETAPS whatever you have to assign to your model you have to go to assign menu okay so we'll assign the joint and click on restraints after that over here is the roller option click on roller and click on apply you can see that now you got rollers and one hinge okay just click on ok so after assigning the joints now we'll assign the load we will first apply the load on this beam so click on this beam okay so left click and go to assign so beam is a frame right so we'll apply the frame load okay and over here we are applying the point load click on point so load pattern name is dead so that is already defined by default okay i will know how to define these loads uh, later and a uh, load type and direction is forces direction is gravity and point load so there are uh, there are two options over here so one is relative distance from end i and uh, another is 
absolute distance from and i so this end of this beam so this beam beam from here up to here so this end is the end i so relative distance from end i means that it has will consider the entire span of the beam as one meter and based on that conversion it will apply the load for example our beam is of five meters and we're applying the load at center that is at 2.5 meters so if so if the if this five meter is taken as one meter then the load will be applied at 0.5 meter that is at the center we'll use this option so relative distance from ni so distance is 0.5 that is at the center of one meter so over here we'll apply the load of 10 kN. okay and relative distance from ni and click on apply you can see that downward direction load of 10 kN has been applied and in the next beam we have got the load at one meter from this support so what we'll do we'll just use the absolute distance from ni option we'll select this beam and at a distance of one meter from ni that is this end so now this end has become the ni for this beam we'll apply the load of five kilo newton so we'll apply the load of five kilo newton and options over here shows that add to existing loads so add to existing loads means that if you have already applied a load for example at this point we have already applied the load and if you want to add any other load you can use this option so next option is for replace existing loads for example if you apply 10 kilometer load so suppose that by mistakenly you applied 20 kilometer load earlier now you want to replace it with the 10 kilonewton load so in that condition you just give the load value here and click on replace existing load 20 kN load value will be replaced by the 10 kN load value okay and delete existing load means that it will delete the existing load that is applied on your structural member okay so uh, just click on okay so uh, give the value of 5 and click on apply you can see that 5 kN load has been applied at a distance 1 meter from this support click on ok after applying the load we'll analyze the structure so for that go to analyze and click on run analysis so before running the analysis you have to save save this model okay so we'll just, i'll just go to documents and over here i'll click on new more new folder and name it as etabs practice okay and i'll open it okay i already have this one all right so new folder 3 and just name it as uh, beam analysis okay so always always make a separate folder for your etabs uh, etabs files because etabs will create multiple files and it they will not mix up with other files okay so click on save Here you can see the deflected shape of the beam in the 3D view. If you want to see the deflected shape of the V in the elevation, you can click on this window. After that, go to display. To see the results of the analysis, you have to go to the display menu. And over here, click on deform shape. And right over here, just click on OK. So now you can see the deflected shape of this beam. Now we want to see the see the shear force and bending movement diagram of this beam right so what we do we just go to display and here this option force stress diagrams and click on frame per spandrel link forces and if you see this icon over here the same icon is also present here so you can either click here or go all the way from the display menu click on here and the case is dead for now and components so what you want to see do you want to see the axial force or the torsion or the shear 22 and the shear 33 so shear 22 is the major shear that is in the x direction and shear 33 is the minor shear that is in the y direction okay so that is just a minor shear similarly movement 22 is the minor movement and movement 33 is the major movement and scaling uh, keep it keep it as automatic so display diagrams fill diagrams and over here we'll select the shear 22 and click on ok so here you can see the shear force diagram of this beam if you want to see the value of the shear force 
then you can click on this option over here it will give you the same window and over here in the display options click on show values at controlling stations on diagram click on ok now you can see the values in normal analysis of a beam we don't consider the weight of the beam so this uh, analysis over here has been done considering the weight of this beam so we'll tell etabs to take the weight of the beam as zero for that unlock the model to do this just click on this uh, lock option over here and click on ok the model has been unlocked so once you unlock the model all the results of the analysis will go away so go to define and click on load patterns all right so right now you don't have to understand other things of this window uh, just remember that so load is dead load that we are applying right now so type is the dead okay so this is just a name and this is the type okay and self weight multiplier over here so one means that it will take weight of that beam so we'll take the self weight multiplier as zero and after that click on modify load and after that click on ok again run the analysis for that you can go to analyze and click on run analysis or you can click on this option over here again you see the deflected shape in this window click on this window over here go to display click on deform shape and click on ok after that click on this window over here so click on ok now the values that you see over here are the values considering the weight of the beam as zero okay so if you want to see the movement diagram again click on this window and over here click on movement 3 3 and click on ok so this is the movement diagram of this beam so if you left click on this window and after that right click you will see this dialog box so it will basically help you to get the movement values deflection values shear force values and the uh, reaction of the supports for this beam okay so the load case right now we are doing on the load case dead and component we are seeing the major force major shear force and the major movement and display location we are seeing the uh, maximum value so i end and the j end for this beam i end is at zero j end is at five meters length of the beam is five meters and a reaction you can see 3.7 to 4 to meter vertical reaction and no movement and here 6.278 kN vertical reaction and also the movement exists over here so shear force you can see also the values so maximum shear force you can see 6.2758 kN uh, at 5 meters that is at the support and movement m3 and uh, movement m3 the maximum value you can see at the location and also the deflection value if you want to see the value of shear force at any particular location just click on scroll for values and over here you can give the distance also you can scroll this line over here so if you when you scroll this line you can see that you get different different values at different locations so after seeing these results click on done so this is how we analyze a simply supported beam in the next section we'll see analysis of a truss